leave a word of exhortation testimony if it stretches into an hour we'll call it a sermon come on let's clap our hands to the lord i feel something special in this house i feel something special in this house i know it's just tuesday night but i come to have church tonight Brother Brantley was feeling in the Holy Ghost while ago. There is something special that is about to happen in our midst. I don't know about you, but I feel like tonight is some kind of, of a catalyst of something that is propelling us to another dimension. I read in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 46, and I tell all the young preachers, if you want to be a good evangelist, don't preach from Jeremiah. He's a weeping prophet. And I was kind of lightheartedly telling him that, and then the Lord made me preach out of Jeremiah for like a month <laughs> in revivals. And one of those passages that I read was this sad epitaph of Pharaoh. It said, and I'll read it from the New International Version tonight, or the newly inspired version. It says there, it's in 46 and 17, it says, and there they will exclaim, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is only a loud noise. He has missed his opportunity. The Living Translation says they will say, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, is a loud mouth who missed his opportunity. He was a great king, had all the wealth that he needed, but he didn't do anything but run his mouth. But you can't find any pyramid with his name on it. He had a great moment, a great opportunity, and squandered it. I don't know about you, but I feel like we're in a moment right now where God is ready to do some things that we've never seen happen before. I felt faith as we're in this house. I, I felt miracles on the making. Uh, and if you will believe God, uh, if you get behind it in prayer, uh, something good is about to happen. Uh, and it might just be for you. Uh, it might be for your family. Uh, it might be on your job. Uh, it might be a, come on, somebody. Uh, I feel it shaking right now. Uh, you can just go and say it's just another ordinary Tuesday night. Uh, but I feel uh, like something good uh, is about to happen. Uh, I feel uh, like something good uh, is on its way. Uh, and what you got to do uh, when the water is troubled, uh, you got to step in. Uh, I said you got to step in. Uh, you can't be passive about it. Uh, you can't be nonchalant about it. Uh, you got to move uh, when God starts moving. Somebody give him shout of praise. Shout, I believe in God. Oh, hallelujah. I come to hear Bishop preach tonight, but I feel something in the Holy Ghost. God's getting us ready for something unique. Hey, this has been preached about. It's been prophesied about. Uh, it's been taught about. Uh, it's now time to step into it. Uh, you're about to, come on, I'm going to prophesy to you. You're about to see one of the greatest harvests. You're about to see one of the greatest harvests uh, you've ever seen. Uh, there's going to be backsliders. Uh, there's going to be people that you've prayed for for years. Uh, they're about to walk through them doors. Uh, they're going to the water in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, if you believe it, you ought to shout about it. It's going to be your family. It's going to be my family. Uh, it's going to be my friends. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Grab somebody close to you and say, are you ready to see it happen? Are you ready for a breakthrough? Tell them, don't miss out on this moment. Don't miss out on this breakthrough. Don't miss out on this revival. It's going to be a historic thing. Come on and clap your hands and give the Lord another shout of praise.
Come on, extend that praise out a little bit farther. Stretch yourself out and praise another step. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Stephen Carson from Ohio. What city? Franklin, Ohio. That's somewhere in Ohio, right? Between Dayton and Cincinnati. Somebody stretch your hands towards Brother Carson. Say, God bless him. Bless his wife. Bless his daughter. Bless his son and daughter-in-law. And give them a revival beyond what they've ever dreamed. In Jesus' name. Would you lift your hands and voice and pray for Brother Jim Hampton. Needs a special touch in his body. Had a rough day. Had a rough day. But we got a great, big, wonderful God. Lord, and you care. You care for us. You care for your people. You care for my brother, for my friend, Brother Jim Hampton. Sister Wilbanks, her and her daughter are making a little trip together. Pray for their safety, and I would greatly appreciate it, and I know she will too. Praise God. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I wish Brother Brantley, Brother Carson, and I would have got together and kind of mapped this out. Then we could appear as gods. But God is God. And brothers and sisters, that's all that counts. It's all. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It would say, now faith is. It doesn't say, now faith is going to be, nor faith has been, but faith is active. Now faith is, is. It would say, it is. Say, it's alive in this room. Say, it's alive in my heart. Say, it's alive in my soul. Is faith alive in your mind? Now faith is. But I don't have or I don't feel. I'm not sure you feel faith. I believe you do faith. But if I ever feel it, I'll do it. You may never do it. Just go ahead and do it. Then you'll feel it. Taste and see. Taste and see. Taste and see. Believe and see. Believe and see. Now faith is. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. Now faith is. The substance. Everybody say substance. Which means concrete essence. It means abstract assurance. Substance means confidence in this verse. Now faith is the confidence of things hoped for. Now faith is the concrete of things hoped for. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The substance. And the evidence or the proof, everybody say conviction. It's the conviction of things not seen. Anybody seen heaven? Anybody seen God? <laughs> You're going to have faith and believe there's a devil. But he's real. Not because I believe, but I believe he is real. So there I prepare myself for the battle through prayer, through fasting, through Bible reading, through Bible study, through soul winning, through worship. And, and it. And it says, now faith, the word faith is the Greek word P-I-S-T-I-S, pistis or pistis. Faith, now persuasion, 
That's what the word faith there means in Hebrews 11 and 1. It means credence. It means conviction. It means reliance upon. Now my reliance upon God is the substance of things I hope for. It is reliance upon religious truth. You're not be saved without Bible religion. Religion comes from the Latin religamenting. Religamenting. To wit, God was in Christ religamenting the human race back unto himself from which they had separated themselves by sin, which means they missed the mark. It means a reliance upon the truthfulness of God. So I thought faith was about getting healed. If you don't have a reliance upon the truthfulness of God, it's tough to get healed. It's tough to get saved. Yea, even impossible. So listen to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Really, chapter 11 begins over a few verses back in Hebrews chapter 10. He said, now the just or the justified shall live by faith. But if any man draw back or lack faith, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Then Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, without faith, persuasion, without credence, without conviction, without reliance, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, purposely, intently seek God. Are you intently seeking for God? Are you relying upon your search for God? He wants to be found by me and you and you and me and by everybody in this city and this state and in the whole wide world. Listen to the scripture as we stay in Hebrews 11 and we're going to do some speed scan reading. Hebrews 11 and 2, for by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Let your faith soar tonight. Verse 4, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated. Watch this. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. It's impossible to find God without faith, and it's impossible to please God without faith. Would you shout amen? Verse 7, by faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark. If you have faith, you'll begin to prepare your faith family to get on the ark of the good old ship Zion. You begin to prepare a safety shelter for your family to receive the Holy Ghost and be baptized in water in Jesus' name and to live a holy, righteous, overcoming life. Would you shout hallelujah? By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance. What did he do? Faith made him obey. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. Verse 11, through faith also his wife Sarah received strength to conceive seed. She was too old. Verse 17, by faith Abraham when he was tried offered up this child that they were too old to have. Verse 20, by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. Verse 21, by faith Jacob when he was dying blessed both the sons of Joseph. Verse 22, by faith Joseph when he died, made a mention of the departing, a prophecy of the children of Israel. You're going to be going out of this land, but I'm giving you commandment. Take my bones with you. And his faith was fulfilled even though he was dead for 400 years. Faith never dies. Faith never dies. Faith never dies. Faith never gives up. Faith never lets up. Faith never takes a vacation. Faith never takes a day off. Faith never takes a sermon off. Faith never takes a prayer meeting off. Faith is, faith is, shout it with me. Faith is, faith is, faith is. It's not a has been, it's not a was, it's not a gonna be, it ain't a coming. Faith is, faith is, faith is. Clap your hands, all you people. Verse 23, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they thought he was a prophet child. What are you doing here, Bishop? What are you trying to read? Are you just trying to read Scripture? No, I'm trying to get your faith tuned in to the Word of God. That's the only faith there is, is faith in God, faith in his Word. But yet we'll have faith. Brother Lawson, would you help me? Would you go to those light switches, please, and turn them off? 
Somebody came in this room tonight, and they looked at the light switch. Ah, they probably don't work. You got to have faith to turn the light switch on. Voila. You mean that's faith? What is it? Is it faith in God? Ultimately, amen, 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 amen. That's what you got to do with prayer. You know why you don't pray? You don't believe it works. So try it out. Try it on for size. Try it out for a week. Try it out for 21 days. 21 days starts a new habit. But it not only starts a new habit, it kills old habits of not praying. There's a lady in this room. She's standing right now. She's concluding a 21-day torturous physical barrage called a fast, and she's broken the curse off of her life. She's broken the curse off of her family. Now it's up to her family to come in. She's Now faith is. Now faith is. Now faith is. That's what I'm preaching tonight. Now faith is. No new jangle. No new tambourine or cymbal. Now faith is. Now faith is. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Young men, young women, middle-aged, young married couples, if you're going to overcome this world, you're going to have to by faith. Somebody shout, by faith. Somebody shout, now faith is. You're going to have to refuse to listen to the jingles and the jangles of the bells and the lights and the whistles and the horns and the guitars and the drums of this world. Verse 25. By faith, Moses chose rather to suffer the affliction with God's people rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Verse 27, by faith, he forsook Egypt. Verse 28, through faith, he kept the Passover. Verse 29, by faith, the Israelites passed through the Red Sea on dry land. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down flat. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. And what shall I more say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David, of Samuel, and also of the prophets who through faith, somebody shout through faith, shout through faith, subdued kingdoms, what righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, and out of weakness were made strong and waxed valiant in the fight and turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Verse 35, and women received their dead, raised to life again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. By faith, CRC was established in 1933. Somebody shout hallelujah. And by faith, we will carry on. You see, faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. By faith, like, but faith, like muscle, grows stronger and more supple with exercising. Exercise your faith, building up yourself on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost, which means you're praying in tongues, you're singing in tongues, you're prophesying in tongues. I remember one time hearing my grandfather preach. This time it wasn't in Arkansas. It was in, in the north, in Michigan. And he preached about a half hour. And 10 minutes of it, at least, was preaching in tongues. And he would stop himself. He would buy his tongue. He would read a scripture to get his tongue. And my grandfather was illiterate except for reading the Bible. And he read it as, bad as, any, bad, as good as any speed reader. But he couldn't read anything else. If he read a Dick and Jane book, he would say, T-H-E, the... D-O-G, dog, R-A-N, ran, T-O-2. That's how he read until he got to the Bible. Now faith is the substance of the thing. And I remember watching Sister uh, Charlotte as he began to preach and it began to glow on his head. I, I, I hadn't heard him preach very much. I'm telling you something, folks. Every one of us uh, is a Noah Walker Wilbanks uh, if we get a hold of faith. Nobody's better. Nobody's worse. But when you get a hold of faith and you begin to use it, you see, faith is to accept the impossible and do without the indispensable and hear the intolerable. Faith is to believe what we do not see and see well, we haven't saw yet. A little faith will bring your soul to heaven. A great faith will bring heaven to your soul. It is the heart of faith that senses God, not the reason of man. This is what faith is. God perceptible to the heart and not to the reason. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Have faith and taste and see that the Lord is good. 
All I have seen teaches me to trust the Creator for all, ha for all that I have not seen. Listen to Romans 1 and 20. For the invisible things of Him from the creation, whatever you want to call invisible, my miracle, your miracle, my healing, your healing, our revival, their revival, Franklin, Ohio revival. We haven't seen it. We, we're getting a taste of it. We're getting a handle on it. We're getting an inheritance of it. So we're getting snippets of it. But there's coming a revival. Somebody say there's a revival upon us. But faith sees it. For the invisible things of him from the creation world are clearly seen. Everybody say they're clearly seen. Oh, I know, I know we preached the other night that we look through a glass darkly, but by faith, uh, the things of God are clearly seen when we step closer and we say by faith, Faith in Jesus is more than intellectual assent. Faith is spiritual reality. I said faith is spiritual reality that God is big enough, powerful enough, and willing enough to meet every need. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Would you clap your hands to Jesus? You see, faith is the element that activates the promises of God. Faith does not rest on our ability, senses, or emotion of the moment. Faith rests on the fact that Jesus is true and that he will perform his word. Would you shout amen? Faith trusts God even when the answer is not visible. Faith is not only believing God can, but believing that God will. Would you shout amen? Faith lifts us into the supernatural realm of the miraculous. I'm going to say it again. Faith lifts you, lifts me, lifts us into the supernatural realm of the miraculous. Sometimes we want the miracle to happen here, but first is God has got to lift us out of the here and now into the eternals, uh, into that which is terrestrial. That, whoo, my God. Faith. Now faith is. Faith is seeing what you accept in Jesus, not accepting what you see. Faith makes the unbelievable believable. Faith makes the unseeable seeable. Faith makes the unthinkable thinkable. Faith makes the incomprehensible comprehensible. Just when you think God can't, he comes through all over again and again. I'm closing. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt. Doubting is different than unbelief. Unbelief just simply says, No way. Doubt says, I know, but I'm just weak right now. I misplaced my faith. Jesus would say repeatedly throughout the Gospels, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Jesus is here tonight, and he's asking, not through me, but he's asking you, where is your faith? Are you distracted by this and distracted by that? It'll steal your faith. It'll rob your faith. It'll take your faith. It'll thwart any miracle, sign, or wonder that wants to happen in your life because faith is Somebody say amen. amen. Therefore, Jesus said, what thing soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Matthew 17 and 20. They asked him, why couldn't we do this? They said, because of your unbelief. In words, you didn't believe you could. You didn't believe you would. You didn't believe it would happen. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. He didn't say the size of mustard seed. He said as a grain of mustard seed. Historians, whoever, whoever they are, the seedologists, they believe that this particular seed that Jesus was talking about is extinct, that it no longer exists. But this seed, when they planted it, they didn't plant it deep. It would grow to be 25, maybe, maybe 26, 27, maybe 30 feet tall. And its branches would spread out as deep as its roots went. And its, deep, its roots would run as deep as 60 to 75 foot deep. 
So therefore, its branches were as wide as its roots were deep. How wide are your branches? It determined by how deep you are in the invisible things of the Almighty God. And God wants this tree big enough. God wants this cornerstone mustard tree to be big enough uh, for all the, let me just use this as a typology, all the beasts of the field, all the birds of heaven can come and land in his branches uh, and find food and find refuge and find answers. Uh, and the beasts will come and they'll find refuge. They'll find protection. They'll find shade uh, to, so that the scorching sun of the demon powers cannot harm them. Somebody say amen. We used to sing an old song, faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. I know it's corny. You don't need a whole lot. Just use faith that you've got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. By faith, Cornerstone Revival Center, we'll see a hundred soul revival in one day, in one night, and beyond. Hear me tonight. By faith, Cornerstone Revival Center will experience a thriving Spanish revival ministry in Coleman County. Through faith, Cornerstone Revival Center will have a blossoming and booming black ministry revival in Coleman, Alabama. I'm not saying we own it. I'm just saying we're going to have it. By faith, Cornerstone Revival Center will establish a flourishing Caucasian revival ministry in Coleman. Through faith, Cornerstone Revival Center will experience a progressiveness of healings and signs and wonders and miracles ministry, not just healings here and there. I'm talking about a ministry of it. I said I'm talking about not a song and dance, and I love song and dance, but I'm talking about a ministry of music that reaches out through those sound waves until you can't, you can't get your work done. You can't get your jobs finished because they're always stopping and say, hey, you're one of them. Hey, you're one of them. Hey, man, you, you got any healing in your hands? You got any miracles in your hands? It's going to get to the place where some of you are going to need to carry hankies from the preacher after he sweated his message out in it. Some of you are going to have to come and get these, 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 these prayer cloths and carry a pocket full of them. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Preacher, do you know where we're at? Yeah, but where's your faith? Would you stand with me? I know it's just barely 8 o'clock. I'm old. I'm tired. It's almost my bedtime. I can't preach as long as these young whippersnappers. Bring them on. I can outslow them. <laughs> I might not can out preach them. James chapter 5. We just heard our pastor preach it here just a couple weeks ago. He took us around the bases of a righteous man. Remember that? By faith. Everybody shout, by faith. By faith. Somebody say, now faith is. By faith, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let me add this. By faith, the fervent faith praying availeth much. That's what he's also saying, effectual. If you don't have faith that it's going to happen, you won't pray fervently. You won't pray effectively. You'll just mamby-pamby along. Hey, it's time for this church. It's way past time for me. It's way past time for you. But it's time for this church to get some hot prayers, some vehement prayers, some fiery, fiery, heaven-sent cloven tongues like as a fire, mighty rushing winds uh, blowing in upon us, uh, and faith praying begins to, would you come out of your place, and would you come down to the altar, and would you bring your faith with you? Don't leave it in your Bible. Don't leave it in your pew. Don't leave it in your chair. Come on down with your effectual, fervent prayer. We've got people here praying. They're fasting, but let's all join hands. Uh, let's all join the bands together. It's one, as one, as one, as one voice, one prayer. One faith, one body. Woo! Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. You're on our side. You're with us. You're in this with us. You created this for us. You baptized.
baptize us with the Spirit. I have the Spirit of faith. Come on, church. Come on, Cornerstone. You have the Spirit of faith. You have the Spirit of faith. You have the Spirit of faith. Cast out doubt. Cast out unbelief. Cast out reasoning. Cost, get rid of your reasoning. Well, that doesn't make sense, preacher. Hey, if God made sense, he wouldn't be God. Who's known the mind of the Lord? Who's been his counselor? His ways are past finding out. Now faith is. 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 Pray it. Shout it. Say it. Talk it. Sing it. Now faith is. Now faith is. I have faith as a mustard seed, like a mustard seed. It's not big, but it's mighty through its faith that it will put a root down 75, 60 feet deep. It has faith that it will grow branches out as long as the roots are deep. Don't give up. Somebody shout hallelujah. By faith, Brother J.L. Patton held street meetings in the city of Coleman back in the 30s and 40s. By faith, Brother Patton built and established this church on the Word of God, the worship of God, and revival from God. By faith, Brother R.J. Underwood carried on the work of divineness. Uh, by faith, Brother Tim Bolin established revivalistic practices, seeing about 40 people in four months' time receive the Holy Ghost. And some of you are here tonight in 1988. By faith, Cornerstone Revival Center has built two Ephesus over the last 30 years, uh, and we've seen revival invade both premises, carrying us to highs of 467 people to 400 people to where we were averaging right at 300. And folks, those days aren't history. Those days are still before us. I shout those days are by faith. Cornerstone Revival has harvested hundreds of lost and backslidden people. By faith, Cornerstone Revival Center has continued and will continue to flourish and expand our borders of influence he's able he's able God's able now unto him who is able he is able by faith Abraham by faith Moses by faith Sarah by faith brother and sister Fitzgerald by faith brother and sister McDaniel by faith brother and sister Carson by faith, TC. By faith, Jacob. Jacob Olson. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. Do you have faith? Grow your faith. Grow your faith. How do I grow faith? Read the Bible every day. How do I grow faith? Pray every day. Fast every week. Would you join it with some people around you and begin to pray a prayer of faith over them? Pray a prayer of faith for Brother Jim Hampton.